to preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. to the River Sally SDA Church's EY service. A service that you'll always remember. We are elated that you have chosen to worship with us this afternoon. And we pray that you will be eternally blessed by all that is in store today. I am your host, Daniel, and this is my co-host, Samson. Yes, greetings, everyone. Viewers and listeners, I hope you are doing well. And our topic this afternoon is self-control. Samson, I find that topic is specifically for you, you know, and all those other Samsons out there. That's true, you know. Uh, while I was the strongest man alive, mm -hmm. hmm, I was also weakened by the tempting charms of the woman named Delilah. Oh, gosh. Mm. Don't trust no woman named Delilah. Samson, come on now. <laughs> but most importantly, I, le I leaned on Jesus, and I asked him for the spirit of discernment. Hmm. E -e, Samson, you are a preacher too. Here be good now. Anyway, for our online viewers and members listening, sit back, relax, and soak in all the vital information presented this afternoon. Oh, yes. You will truly be blessed. So, once again, we say welcome. welcome. Join us at this time as we lift the Lord's name in prayer, and this will be done by Brother Angus. Let us pray. The Heavenly Father, we give you divine thanks and praise for your loving kindness towards us. We pray, O oh Father, for your Holy Spirit in our midst. We pray, O oh Father, that you will bless all aspects of this afternoon's service. And at the end of it, O oh Father, I pray that your name be blessed and each and every one of here, us here live with a message. So take total charge and control over us. And I pray whatsoever is to be said and done here, will be done to your names, glory, and honor. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Samson, if it's one thing I love, it's some good gospel music, something I so long for in my time in Babylon. But you know, soca alone, they playing right through. Uh-huh. Carnival every day? Oh gosh, telling me? So that's why I'm looking forward to some lively music by our choristers, Sister Nedra, Sister Rachel, and Sister Jadia. Are you looking forward to it as well? Of course, of course. Daniel, mm. all you don't know, eh? Uh, Delilah try another trick on me uh, to get a circuit of my strength. She tries singing. Oh gosh. Bonjour. Uh, I don't know who gave her that idea, you know. 
because I couldn't even, I could even tell a, a good lie enough to know. Must you know, <laughs> it was that bad. It was that bad. Oh gosh. Well, we shall be surely blessed today. Let's join with us as the choristers make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Our first song will be What a Mighty God We Serve.
to take our Advent Youth Sing and turn to him number 169. 169, standing on the promises. Advent you sing. One, nine, three. Way beyond the blue. Wonderful, Daniel. Oh, I mean, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. I know it's been a while since you've heard some good music. A uh, long, long time, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just as we true Christians truly know how to praise God, we can stand here and proudly today to declare our AY's aim, motto, and pledge. Yes, yes, yes. We are inviting you to join us as we recite the following. Our AY aim, motto, motto and, and pledge. pledge. The aim? 
the Advent message to all the world in my generation. The motto, the love of Christ compels me. The pledge, loving the Lord Jesus, I promise to take an active part in the youth, in the work of the Adventist Youth Society, doing what I can to help others and to finish the work of the gospel in all the world. The mission, the salvation of youth through Jesus Christ, we understand youth ministry to be that work of the church that is conducted for, with, and by young people. But hold on. Those in the audience did not stand. Mm. Come on, we're asking you to stand now for our song, the Adventist Youth Song. All those in the audience. At home, you don't have to, but we're asking those who are present here, the members, to stand for our Adventist Youth Song. And let us sing lustily together. Amen, amen. Adventist, Adventist Youth are we from every land and sea. Together we pray and work and play in a piano. We have a fair to share. Thank you for singing. You may have your seats. You may have your seats. Daniel, Daniel. Fun fact. You know, in my day, I was a musician, you know. You was a musician? <laughs> yeah, boy. Okay. I could play the harp with such elegance, even the Philistines would be surprised. Oh, wow, Daniel. I would have never guessed that because I know they say you need nimble fingers, but I'm looking at your, your fingers and, oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Careful, you know. <laughs> but... Oh. You know, I don't know who said this, you know, but they say, don't judge a book by the cover. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. It's just that you are mainly known for your overwhelming strength and physique. I never thought you were so proficient on a harp. Oh, yes, but I was so good at it, eh? But you know, even though I enjoyed playing the harp, mm -hmm. nothing beats good gospel music. Mm -hmm. mm. That's true, that's true. Well, tell us what's going to happen next. You know the thing, man. Let's sit back, relax, and enjoy as we are blessed by a special rendition in song.
us go and tell them the goodness about our Jesus. We must return and tell them that Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready to meet him there? go and tell all nation that Jesus is coming from north and south east to west we have this gospel to tell the world Jesus is coming to take us on I will go And that was wonderful. wonderful. Such beautiful music. You know what, Samson? I feel inspired to sing now. Read your Bible, pray every day. Pray every day. Pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day. And you'll grow, grow, grow. You know, I think I heard that one before. Yes, I know you heard it. It's a little tune my parents taught me when I was younger. And you know, it stuck with me all throughout my life. I was always reading my Bible and praying every day. Even when they said that if I did, I will be thrown in the, into the lion's den. The lion's den? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. So, reading the Bible every day, mm -hmm. did that also teach you self-control? Most definitely, Samson. Through praying and reading my Bible every day, I knew that eating unclean and fatty foods would not be the best for my mental clarity. So I abstained and was successful in my studies. Mm, I'm feeling so inspired. And brethren, you will be too. By what's next? As we will now have a devotional experience. Yes, viewers. Are you familiar with the game Sword, Samson? I don't think so, you know. We learn every day. Yes, that's true. Well, Samson, it's a Bible text game where someone reads to a group of persons a Bible text, and the first person who finds and reads that text gets a point. The final person who gets the point by answering the Bible text is the winner. Oh. Yeah. You didn't know that? So, 
So even if you get the first point, mm -hmm. you still have a chance of winning. You are so right. Uh -huh. So let's welcome the children at this time as they play swords and are directed by Brother Angus. And as, they come, and as they come, please be sure to like and share the page with your family and friends. They don't want to miss this message from God. Good afternoon, everyone, again. All right, we have the young people here who are always anxious when it comes to studying of the Bible. This afternoon, our devotional um, aspect will take the format of swords in hand. All right, do you have your Bibles? All right, swords up. All right, the first text is taken from Luke 11. Luke 11 and verse 4, draw swords. also forgive everyone that is in debate to us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Well done brother Rem. All right, the second text is also taken from the book of Luke. So it's up. Luke 11 and verse 2. Draw sword. Amen. Amen. Well done, Sister Rachel. All right. So we're moving on. The next text is also taken from Luke. And this text is taken from Luke 11 and verse 9. So it's up. Draw swords. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given, given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. Amen. Amen. All right. The next text. The next text is taken from Galatians. So it's up. And it's taken from Galatians 6 and verse 7. Galatians 6, 7. Draw swords. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth. That shall he also reap. Amen. Amen. All right. Well done, Brother Ruel. We're moving on. The next text is taken from Hebrews. So it's up. And this text is taken from Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. Your swords. Without which no man shall see the, see the Lord. Amen, amen. All right. Wonderful, Brother Rel. We're moving on. Final text. Just before I conclude the devotional aspect for this afternoon. And this text is taken from Matthew. So it's up. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48. Draw swords. Amen, amen. All right, so at this time, we want to congratulate the boys, uh, the boy and girls who are up here. Each and every one of you are winners in your own right. I right, thank you very much for participating. Brothers and sisters, as I end this devotional exercise, I pray that God will bless you with courage and strength to exercise self-control in every aspect of your life. Join closer to him with each passing day. Amen? Amen? Wow, wow. That was wonderful. I hope you all took away some key scriptures from that game, you know, because I know I did. Daniel, mm -hmm. hmm. you mentioned before that you were thrown in the land then, but how come I never hear about that? What, what do you mean you never? 
Oh, boy, you know, I forget you. It's like a million years older than me. <laughs> Take your time, you know. Not oh, too much. Sorry, not too sorry, much. sorry. Don't beat me up like them Philistines. But yes, I was thrown in the lion's den for simply worshipping my God. Wow. So, there was a rule that said you could not? Yes, boy. I had some ops that wanted to get rid of me. So they made a rule that I could only pray to the king, my real good partner, Darius, for a few days. But it was God who woke me up this morning, not no man. Mm, yes, man. Yes, man. Preach it. Uh, but how did you practice self-control, you know? Why didn't you just give in to the rule, you know, just to be safe? Lions there. Samson, prayer and supplication. You know the, the number of things that God has done for me in my life? Don't be offended, but his strength was not as finite as yours. No, 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 you're right, you're right. As the song says, my God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Exactly. So even though I was thrown into the lion's den, the Lord delivered me out of that situation. Amen, amen. Boy, you could tell story, we. <laughs> Let's give Sister Roberts a chance to tell us one right now for the children. Amen. self-control. So part of God's story is about the fruit of the Spirit, and it goes like this. The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. They're all good to have, and they all come from God. But for now, let's focus on self-control. When the Bible talks about self-control, it's more than watching what you say and Fruit of the Spirit, self-control. So part of God's story is about the fruit of the Spirit. And it goes like this. The Bible says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. They're all good to have, and they all come from fruit of the Spirit, self-control. So part of God's story is about the fruit of the Spirit. And it goes like this. The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. They're all good to have, and they all come from God. But for now, let's focus on self-control. When the Bible talks about self-control, it's more than watching what you say and thinking before you act. Self-control is when we trust God to help us know what's good for us and say no to things that aren't. Self-control is a skill God grows in us when we choose to consider Him and others before doing what we think will make us happy. Did you know it takes at least 80 days before watermelon seeds grow from a garden? Like watermelon, self-control takes a long time to grow. It's not something you can learn in one day. Like anything you want to get good at, you need to practice self-control every day. Now, it's not always easy to practice self-control, but with the help of the Holy Spirit, you can control your thoughts, words, and actions. And Jesus can help you understand how to make better decisions. Even if we know it's always best to show kindness to a friend or sibling, we don't always respond the way we should. 
The Bible tells us to practice self-control no matter what happens. James 1.19 says, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. And 2 Timothy 1.7 tells us, God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And in Luke 9.23, Jesus says, Anyone who wants to be my follower must deny themselves, take up their crosses daily, and follow me. Now, when the Bible tells us to practice self-control by being slow to speak and slow to anger, it's not telling us to talk slowly or take our time getting angry. It's saying we shouldn't be so quick to tell others what to do or to blurt something out that might not be true or helpful. That's why we need God to help us control our actions. Self-control may look like not taking the last piece of pizza when you're already full, or letting someone else pick a game during family night, or not lashing out when someone annoys you. Remember, when we think about God and others before doing what will make us happy, we are choosing to be like Jesus, who practiced self-control when he carried out God's plan of dying for our sins. If Jesus hadn't practiced self-control, we would have to die as punishment for the things we do wrong. So when we practice self-control with our family and friends, we are showing God's self-control to others. Practicing self-control is part of what it means to have the fruit of the Spirit. Maybe you can think of an area in your day you need to practice self-control and ask God to help you. And as you experience God and grow in your faith, the Spirit can grow more self-control in your life. Daniel, one of these good days, you have to hear me play the harp, you know. Hey, interesting, you know. I would take hearing you play that harp over listening to the horrible music I had to experience in Babylon. Yo, you mean the soca and dance out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I hear you used to be an, a big soca artist back in the day. Don't fret me, boy. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh, Ari. Wasn't the music tempting, though? As I said, I regularly used to pray and read my Bible every day. So my ears were only in tune with the word of God. But I could imagine somebody who doesn't do what I did every day being tempted by music like that. That's why we need... Self-control. All right. Mm, the team for this afternoon. Yes, my boy. Mm. Viewers and listeners, I hope you are liking and sharing this page. Because you know up next, we have another song and special rendition by Sister Jadia. Sit back and relax as she blesses us. Love, love that Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary, the blood. Gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain and it blows. And 
and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. It And it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose. It will never lose. It will never Oh, yes, boy. That's some good music, you know. I sure you wish you had that when you was in the, in the lion den. Just to keep your spirits up. If again, I'm just thankful that God delivered me. You know, Samson, I heard that you had your share of encounters with lions too. I even heard that you ripped a lion in half with your bare hands. Ah. Uh. Really hear the good stuff, man. Honestly, the lion deserves what was coming to him. Well, I know you're a strong man, but be honest. You weren't a little scared, Samson? Of course not. You know, I had no need to be, because uh, I know God would give me strength, and guess what? In the end, he definitely did. Wow, that is inspiring. I don't mean to be nosy like Delilah, but along with your strength, along with your hair, what else did you do to keep your strength? Don't worry, Daniel. I'm, I'm more than happy to share the, that, that, that information with you. You know, not eating much meat. I was, I was a, a full vegetarian man, you know? Okay. Actually, I love, I love fruits and vegetables. Oh, yes, I had a big Julie mango tree in the back of my yard. Mm. Anytime that thing bear fruit, I was the first person to get a share in that. Mm. And the healthy lifestyle I lived, I believe, also contributed to the maintenance of my strength. I'm amazed. I wish you had your own mic on so you could tell the, the, the viewers what, that you, what you did to keep your strength. But don't, don't think that... I, I don't think you... Give in to the pressures of your friends, did you? Hmm, I, I don't know, tell me. No, no, no. You see, they, they, they tell me eating meat and drinking alcohol is... <laughs> was a good tempted. Okay, okay, let me take that off. I was tempted, you know, but I knew that strength was the most important thing, so I had to have self-control. Wait. Why are you watching me so far? You knew that your strength was most important, so you had self-control? <laughs> Come on, Daniel. Delilah is just a different, a different story, you know? Yes, I hear you. But that healthy, healthy lifestyle you brought up perfectly ties in with what is coming next, which is our health done by Sister Philip. Isaiah 55, 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is nigh. This One. is exactly what we need to do to obtain self-control. In the Bible, self-control is often referred to as self-discipline or temperance. It is a fundamental and very important virtue. It involves the ability to exercise restraint and moderation in the aspects of life which includes our thoughts, words, actions, and desires, needs, and wants. 
It is also a fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, and it's essential for living a godly and righteous life. Prayer helps us to ask for the support of the Holy Spirit to keep us from yielding to temptation. We need that power daily to do what is right. Along with prayer, God will direct us along the path we need to go. He may also put earthly people in our way. We need to do our part to avoid risky situations that may cause us to fall. For example, negative friends, negative places, negative thoughts, sights, and the taste. In order to exercise restraint, we must allow God to control and transform our minds. Romans 12, 2. Here are some tips to help us grow our self-control. Pray for divine guidance. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are God of my salvation. For you, I will wait all the day long. Psalms 25, 5. Pray for strength in temptation. No temptation has overtaken, has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Pray for patience to wait, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such thing, there is no law. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Pray for wisdom to make wise decisions. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who give generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. James 1, 5. Pray for control over desires. Food, sex, drugs, media, work, shopping, gossiping. I discipline my body and keep it under control. Least after preaching, the, preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. 1 Corinthians 9, 27. Pray for a renewed mind, positive Christ-like mind. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God. What is good and acceptable and perfect? Romans 12, 2. Oh no, Samson, you know, I forget my notebook and my pen, you know. You mean to take down the tips and, and, and stuff from the message? Yes, oh. from the health message. You can remember for the both of us? Don't worry, boy. I'm not only physically strong, mentally too. Okay, I like that. Daniel, I can't wait any longer to get into the meat of this program today. I have a strong feeling it will be very inspiring. I agree. So let's officially introduce our topic for today. Take it away, Samson. Self-control is a fundamental aspect of Christian living, reflecting discipline and obedience to God's will. Regarding food, Christians are encouraged to practice moderation and gratitude, acknowledging that our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Oh yes, in entertainment, self-control involves discerning what aligns with biblical values and avoiding indulgence in sinful or harmful content. Regarding sex, Christians are called to honor God's design for intimacy within the confines of marriage, exercising self-restraint and purity. Concerning drugs and alcohol, we are called to be wise and not allow ourselves to be led astray by anyone in these things. And finally, in education, self-control entails diligence and focus in, in the pursuit of knowledge and wisdom, utilizing one's talent for glory of God. Overall, self-control in these areas reflects a commitment to honoring God in every aspect of life. So stay with us as we embark on the journey of self-control and explore the various aspects such as food, education, sex, drugs, alcohol, and entertainment, all areas that we can be tempted by. So true. And so the first area of self-control we will be discussing is food.
Hi, babe. Hi, darling. Do you want a piece of my cake? Thank you so very much. But you know something? I have been making some healthy food choices lately. Oh, really? Yes. How do you manage to do that? Hmm, let me tell you something. I've realized that I can't follow every craving that come to me. Oh, yeah? I have to think. You know what I'm saying? I listen to my body's hunger cues mm. and I make the more nutritious choice. I choose the healthiest stuff like carrot sticks. You mean and you salads. You mean you don't eat chocolate? Hmm. Ice cream. Why are you talking chicken? about this kind of thing and them now for? That's impressive. Uh, I struggle with this. No, let me tell you something. Let me be honest with you. Mm. This thing isn't easy, you know. I know. It isn't easy. It's a hard thing to do. But mm. with God's help, we can do it. Right. With God's help, we can think, mm. listen to what the Bible tells us, and we can make the healthy choice for us. You're right. You're right. You're right. I should give it a try. Of course. Absolutely. But Remember... I I got I to gotta really think about it first, eh? Yes. But I, I got to give it a try. You know, I think about how it makes me feel good. It makes me feel good physically. I can see mentally. that. Mentally. I know you like to see me. I can yes. see that. Yes. So, remember, mm. it's about balance. And self-control. Wow, wow. Daniel, that dialogue called me out in so many ways, you know. Mm. Uh, you know, I like my ice cream and cake too. Right. So I got to stop that thing now. Mm. Boy, you wasn't listening. Who tell you you have to stop? Everything in moderation, of course. Oh, yes, yes, you're right. But I like how they play that part, that part perfectly, captivating the temptations that are present in food and other harmful substances. Yes, I agree. You remember the time I cooked up a wonderful feast just to be tricked by my bride? Mmm. Y you were married? Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. You know, it, it wasn't meant to happen, you know. But the day that I was supposed to get married, I lost a very important bet. How could I forget that story? D don't worry, don't worry. That's, a, that's a, a story for another day. Make sure you know, because that sounds like a good one. But let's not chit-chat for too long, as Elder Philip will now be presenting on what should and shouldn't be done concerning food. Members, visiting friends, online viewers and listeners, we invite you to listen attentively and take notes because this is sure to be important. Without any further ado, we welcome Elder Philip. Thank you very much. The Apostle Paul, writing from prison to the church at Philippi, said, among the many things, he said this. He said, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Could you imagine? Philippians chapter 4 and verse 5. And that was about 2,000 years ago. In Publications Special Testimonies Series A, number 9, ellenwhitedefense.com says, Men will never be truly temperate until the grace of Christ is an abiding principle in the heart. Brothers and sisters will not practice temperance in all things until their hearts are transformed by the grace of God. The Apostle Paul shockingly declared in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, he said, what? Knowing not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you, are, which you have of God and you are not your own? Therefore, for you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. You see, we must guard our appetite. When we learn that on that ground of appetite, the Edenic family lost their home and failed. You see, it is also on the ground of appetite that Jesus Christ triumphed after being hungry and mind you, he was without food for 40 days. It is reasonable to deduce that being born again, as Jesus said in John chapter 3 and verse 3, indicates that our self-control in food must also be a reflector. 
it is reasonably true that the quality of life that we lead is a direct reflection of the quality, quantity, and type of foods we consume. We are strictly instructed in Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse 23 to abstain from eating blood. Yes, blood pudding. Cultural for us. Blood, you see, blood contains the life history of the flesh. But should, shouldn't self-control in food, but should self-control in food be distant and isolated from health reform? According to the book, Council on Diet and Foods, section 268.2, the Lord would have a knowledge of diet reform imparted to the people of God. So self-control is described as the foundation of all victories. Yes, the foundation of all victories. It is amplified. Self-control is amplified in our desires. Today, more than yesterday, appetite appears to control reason. Excuses for overindulgence seems rational and justifiable. The immorality of Israel, according to scripture, was preceded by eating, drinking, and then the games of immorality, as we can find in Exodus 32 and verse 6. You see, friends, a clouded mind supported by intemperance results in gluttony, the base desires goes before immoral engagement. No wonder why people eat and drink and get high and don't know what they do after. In the days of Noah, Noah's day manifested similar void of spiritual gravity. And we can read about that in Genesis chapter 6. You see, Jesus had this to say in Luke chapter 17, verses 26 and 27. He amplified that there's a parallel between Noah's day and the return of himself to the earth, to judge in the final judgment. You see, unregulated eating, not just eating, unregulated eating, divinely unsanctioned, degrading marital assignments, while displaying indifference to the eternal fate of every soul, is a problem that we face. We trivialize the consequences of unhealthy lifestyle choices and habits until, for many, it is too late. You see, we decry councils, even in church, we decry councils that one of, the, of the, the connection between health, healthy eating, and clear thinking. We decry it. We say that it is one of the areas that we should hardly be enforced upon. But... We are told that there is a, a direct relationship between, il between eating, drinking, and ailments and mental, spiritual clarity and enfeeblement. So Paul declared in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So we'll have clearer perception and nobler decision, and that should be to the glory of God. Reform in health will never lead to health deformation. You see, man, according to Jesus, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We find that in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. This is God's word to us today. What is your need? Is your need self-control? Let's try Jesus. Wow, wow. Short, sweet, and straight to the point. Thank you, Elder Philip. Oh, yes. I hope you took good notes, Samson, because I sure did. Uh, boy, I almost full up my notebook. I find that message was directed specifically to me, you know. <sighs> you know how I like my belly. In truth, in truth. But I really needed to hear that message, too. You, Daniel? Yes, Samson. There was a time when I was offered the most delicious food and drink by the king. But I knew that if I indulged, I would be disrespecting and violating God's messages. But Daniel is the king. How, how you could not have eat? You know I a bad, John. Let me stop it. Let me stop it. <laughs> I did not come to that decision on my own. 
three Hebrew boys and I stood steadfast and only ate things that God ordained as clean. And guess what? What? Even after only eating grains and veggies, the four of us were at the top of the top in education. Hmm. So, so, so what I'm saying is, if I had only eaten fruits and vegetables, I could have been both smart and strong. If you want the answer to that, you will have to pay attention to this next dialogue focused on education. Hmm. Okay, okay, if you say so. Let's head straight into the second dialogue on education. <sighs> That's cool, go kill me, boy. Hi, Mr. Monique. How are Hi, Brother you? Stefan. How are you? Well, I'm inviting you to um, church this Sabbath. This Sabbath today? Nah, mm -hmm. I, I can't make that. School have me tied up, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And when Saturday come around, mm -hmm. that's just for me to rest. But you know Saturday is the time to give the Lord his praise and worship. Mm -hmm. That's true, you know. But I can't make it this Sabbath, not this Sabbath. Next Sabbath? Maybe. Okay. Oh, boy, I'm late for school, boy. Oh. Slow down, slow down, slow down. I have to talk to you. All right, so we have an evangelistic series right up in your area. So once again, I'm inviting you to come. I can't make that, man. Listen, assignments, mm. schoolwork. Oh, no, boy. that's not possible. Mm. What? That's tough. Yeah. So what's going on in your life? What do you mean? Well, it seems the school taking up all your time. You used to come to church regular. I don't see you know how it Let me be honest with you assignments after s assignments mm -hmm. and I still have to study for exams. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I just need to do what I have to do to pass. But since I'm working, you know, you have to be, you have to be, te you have to have temperance in your education. You want to get mad at such a young age? Definitely not. Uh, therefore, there have to be temperate in your education and make time for God and he will come through for you. Hmm. That's true enough. I'm inspired by your words. And to be honest, if it wasn't for God, I would not have the strength to complete my exam mm -hmm. and even to do assignments. Okay. Yeah. So I have made the decision that I would be there for the evangelistic series. So see you there. Mr. Moy, that's the spirit I go see. We'll see you there. Take care. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. <laughs> you are right, you know, Daniel. Not only focusing on what I eat, but also listening to God and his conviction in my life yes indeed and did you see how god used that brother to help the sister turn on the right path to jesus oh yes oh yes but how 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 tell me how am i mm -hmm. the strongest man alive the man with the big temper mm -hmm. all that how am i supposed to change well samson I mean, I've been seeing it throughout this whole, this whole pr service, prayer and supplication. True, okay. true, true. Okay, yes. And just like in your time with Delilah, I know God was speaking for you. Did, what, wasn't he speaking to you? Yes, yes. God, God was always there, you know. Mm -hmm. God was always there. Okay, good. Well, I think we should get a little more enlightened on the topic. I think so, too. So I invite Sister Jillian at this time as she presents on self-control in education. Self-control in education. I want to start by sharing one of my preferred definitions of education. And it comes from E.G. White. Permit me to paraphrase. She says it's the harmonious development of the physical, mental, and spiritual powers that would equip a child to function in society and in the world to come. Now, when I think of education, lots of key stakeholders come to mind. Parents, teachers, students. I'm limited, so I'm going to just stick to these three and try to make brief comments as it relates to self-control in education. Parents, now, Again, I go back to the pen of inspiration. She says one of the early lessons a child needs to learn is self-control. And I want to submit humbly that self-control can be caught and self-control can be taught. Yes, as parents, 
children can vicariously learn from you behaviors that are positive towards self-control or not so positive. So, what do you do? What do you do when you need to exercise some self-constraint? Because some impulse or desire presents itself that says, stop, red light. An example, what do you do when you get angry? What do you say? What do you do? And your children are looking at you. Now, if we repeatedly engage in certain kinds of behaviors, our children would begin to think that, hey, this is the way to behave when I'm angry. Have you recognized that there are some songs you don't teach your children, but because they travel on certain transportation, over time, they know the words. The same thing happens. So the point I want to leave with you, the first point, parents, you are always on the catwalk. Yeah, you are always modeling. And your model should be a summon in itself. Self-control can also be taught. And I want to run quickly to two texts that we are very familiar with. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And the text from Deuteronomy 6, 7 that speaks to walking and talking and when you're lying down, you know, you should be communicating with your children. I want to marry these two texts. And my takeaway is this. Parents, we have to develop a culture where children are taught deliberately and incidentally about self-control. Do you agree? Yes. Yep. So my time is limited. I want to move on quickly to another point. Parents, I'll tell you a little secret. We have a deadly, non-living babysitter creeping into our homes. Deadly, non-living. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me give you some examples. Smartphone, television, electronic gadgets. Mind you, these gadgets in and of themselves, they are not bad. But when our children are exposed to these gadgets for extended periods of time, unsupervised, troubling the rubble, as the young people would say, the truth is sometimes they can be exposed to negative vices, and in the process, they can also develop addiction. Now, when these gadgets become a stopgap, because parents are so busy, and again, busy doing good things, getting to work, returning from home, assisting with the chores, studying online, running to church board meetings, all good things, self-control. Are we doing all of those good things without giving you know, critical thought to self-control and thereby opening gates for disaster in the lives of our children? I want to move on. Teachers, I'm a teacher. I've been teaching, and you know, I started doing some content, and I dare say I've been teaching for about 30 years. And there is something that we all say. Teaching is becoming more challenging. Every year, teaching seems to be becoming more challenging. Um, as I think about self-control, this is what comes to mind. We need to consider the nature of our children. They come from different homes, self -par um, single parents, yeah? homes from different socioeconomic backgrounds. They come with different abilities. Some children, they're eager to learn. They are the high flyers. You have the average learners. And you have some children, God forbid, they have absolutely no interest in learning. The teachers are the one excited about learning and not the children. They also have different learning styles. And there are some we remember, you know, the bully, the instigator, yeah? The one who is just happy to say, I'm part of that gang, ha, 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 ha. Yep, and we have those that we love to death. They are on time, they want to be part of the school, they're just eager to learn. Now, walk with me. Take an imaginary walk to a classroom. You put all of these children in a classroom, 20, 25, 30 of them. What do you have? A volcano waiting to erupt. Self-control. Sometimes as teachers, it's almost as if you, if you have to stop minute by minute second by second to decide what's the next step. Trust me, sometimes it's almost as if we have to get a literal zip put on our mouths so that we would avoid saying things that we would regret. Or sometimes we have to pretend we don't have muscles because we might do something that could get us into trouble. Self 
control. What will be your response? More than ever, I think that as educators, we need to be more proactive, yes, in maintaining self-control and tap into the source of wisdom it was mentioned earlier, seek discernment and revelation from the king of kings. All right, time is flying away. Students, now I want to look at self-control from the angle of what are you doing with what you are learning? What are you doing with what you are learning? In other words, how are you making use of your education, those knowledge, skills, and attitudes that are imparted to you? Can you use what you are learning in a positive or negative way? For instance, most of you are tech savvy, yeah? So how are you using this knowledge? Researching or cyberbullying? Collaborating to complete projects? or collaborating on how to hack someone's account. These instances all demand self-control. Consider too how education allows you to manage time. As much as you need the electronic gadgets to enrich your learning, but how do you exercise self-control? For example, do you spend limited time to minimize the impact of blue light? Are you up in the wee hours of the morning, you know, because you had that project to work on? What happens? You show up to school the next day, sleepy, 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 sleepy. But the truth is, while you were supposed to be working on the project, self-control was thrown out the window. You used some time to game. You use a little time to chat with your friends on WhatsApp. And so next day, you cannot function. Self-control. In closing. Parents, caregivers, teachers, listeners, viewers, exercising self-control is very challenging. But let's remember, God is our source of strength. Is there anything too hard for him? A resounding, big, fat? No. Let's seek his strength daily. Wow. Listening to that, I'm wondering, not disrespect eh? but... You spend so much time in the gym, Samson. You don't go to school. You're trying to say I don't? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not me that get tricked by a woman that was trying to kill me, you know? Hmm. You never drop in that. <laughs> Daniel, if you see that girl. Hmm. Talk to me, Samson. Describe her. Okay, okay. Uh. Brown hair. Uh -huh. Blue eyes. Oh, gosh. Fair skin. Pink lips. Mm. White woman. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on, I don't done yet. Continue. Ah, when, when she, when you dare on that, if you see the shape and all. Mm. Oh gosh, okay, yeah, take it, thank you, thank you. I heard enough, Samson. That's why this next dialogue that's coming up is especially for you. Uh-huh. What, what it about? Sex, drugs, oh, oh. alcohol, and entertainment. Okay, okay, uh, I'm making sure I listen to that one because mm. I know... I was tempted by all those stuff. Yes, and viewers and listeners out there too, especially you young ones, pay attention. This next dialogue is for you. Hey, bro, Wagwan, how you now? Hi there, man. Uh, what's going on with you now? Boy, oh boy. <laughs> boy, one of my friends invited me to in a session day. In a session? Yeah, boy, tell me you got real girls, real girls. When I talk about girls, girls in a bungalow and see you got dogs too. Uh -huh. Alcohol. What? Uh-huh. Uh, real music and wine and thing. Hey, hey, uh, hey. What's going on with you, bro? But I think about it. I really think about it. I think hard, hard. Right about now, I did a battle whether to go or not. Uh-huh. Yeah. So where you want to start? By this thing real puzzle me in my mind, boy. Why do you think about sex? Hmm. Real girls in the, they tell me real hmm. girls go be in the party. Uh-huh. Real girls. <laughs> and all kind of, you know, when the girls are never wearing the garments, it's real thing. <laughs> Bro, boy, look to the word. Look to the word? Yes, man. Right. Now, the Bible says this thing should be enjoyed only in the confines of marriage. Amen. Uh -huh. only, only in the confines of marriage. Yes, man. All right. So, I mean, I don't think about I'll come, I don't think about that. Think hard, really man. Really have to think about that. Think hard. The temptation is great. Yeah. But I also remember about self-control. Yes, man. We have to guard the avenue of the soul. The fruit of the spirit. Yes, of You know course. something good, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Going back down to alcohol. Yeah. Yeah, but they say you got real strong drink and thing. Hmm. They say you go, you have drinks. Drinks can done. You better be careful. 
Uh, you want to um, roll in a drain? Drain? By yeah. joker making? Be careful, boy. If uh, you look at the Bible, it said these things not good. Strong oh. drink is raging. You oh, consume yes. it is not wise. Oh, yes. Are you wise? Oh, yes. I remember when I speak <laughs> about your body, the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, man. Uh. Oh. Yeah. I have to be mindful of what I put in in God's temple. Yes, man. Of course, I have to be mindful. Yeah, man. Yes. What boy. else? You are more? Yeah, boy. And, um, Entertainment. Entertainment. We speak hmm. about that already. Well, you better watch what you, you listen to. Or watch what, what you I do. Yeah, and watch where you go to. Uh, so I can boogie down? <laughs> you're making joke. And you say you can boogie down. By self-control, you're missing the thing. Self-control. I'm missing the thing. Yeah, man. So you're telling me I should control myself? Yes, man. Don't let nothing else control me. But let the spirit take control of my life. Yes, man. All right. But I'm still confused. Uh -huh. What do you think? Call the pastor, man. You confused? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Call we the should, pastor. Yeah, man. We should call the pastor, man. Ah, fine, ah, fine, yeah, ah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's call the pastor. Let's call the pastor. I tie with you now, man. Call yeah, the pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let yeah, the pastor yeah. give us some more yeah. information. Uh -huh. All right. We will now be blessed by a special rendition and song by Sister Rowan Lyon. singing man. amen wow not just that you know the, the information we get from the dialogue uh mm. that's some good information you know i took away a lot of key points yes even myself it's always a good reminder that these things such as sex and drugs are not really worth it yeah. also 
Big up to Sister Edlyn, who is watching from abroad. We see you, and we just want to say we see you. <laughs> You're so right, you know, Daniel. That's precisely why we've come up with a little experiment to demonstrate how drugs, sex, and alcohol, even entertainment, can mess up our lives. With a little twist at the end, so viewers and listeners pay keen attention. So right here, we have a bottle, and if you notice anything, it's white. It's, it's very unsuspecting. You know, you won't really think that it has any, anything in it, or any malicious thing in it. Mm -hmm. And here is a glass of water, which represents the innocence in all of us. Mm -hmm. But as you'll notice, as Daniel pours the contents of the white bottle into the glass, Ooh, the color has changed. It's red. Mm -hmm. And look at how it discolors the water and changes it. That's exactly what sex and drugs and alcohol do to our body. Mm -hmm. You know, other substances too. But <laughs> it changes and it messes with us. God doesn't really want that. But hey, do not think that our hope is lost for you. As in this next bottle, Ooh. you will see how God can actually turn your life around. Yes, yes. What do you notice as Daniel pours? Look at that. Wow. It turns clearer, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> oh. And it's completely clear. Mm -hmm. All the sin, all the Drugs, all the alcohol, it can all be changed with a little bit of? A little bit of self-control. But, Danielle, you know, even though it's completely clear, you may, you may see there's a little tint still yes, to the water. Yes. And that represents the sin that's still inside of us. Because, you know, we are not perfect. We are all imperfect humans, just as yes, God made yes. us. Yeah. And... And even if it's not, you know, completely clear, <laughs> because we all have seen inside of us, Jesus can make a lot of difference. Oh, yes, Brother Samson. And I'm sure that Pastor Lyons would speak to a little bit of that after this. Oh, yes. Pastor Bernard Lyons is married to the Reno to Roman Lyons. Together, they have four children. <laughs> he served as the youth director to the conference and is presently serving as the pastor to the Northern District. So, let's welcome him at this time as he presents the Word of God to us, Pastor Lyons. What a pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Give God thanks and praise for a wonderful day and for the warm sunshine <laughs> that we are experiencing. I know that we are indoors, but I've been outside in recent times and I can tell you that the sun is hot. Or maybe more specifically, the temperature outside is hot. This afternoon, as we focus on the various aspects of youth life that they seem to fall in or demonstrate weakness in, I draw our attention to the church manual because I believe we have vital information that can help us to answer the issue about girls in bong and uh, the food that we eat, the music that we listen to, entertainment. And so let us look at chapter 13 in the manual. It is page 163, and then we are going to transition into the Bible. The manual says, under... The heading, Standards of Christian Living, High Calling of God in Christ Jesus. The Christian's life is not a slight modification or improvement, but a complete transformation of nature. This means a death to self and sin, and a resurrection to a new life as a new person in Christ Jesus. The heart of the Christian becomes a dwelling place of Christ by faith. 
This is brought about by the contemplation of Christ, beholding Christ, ever cherishing the dear Savior as our very best and honored friend. So that we would not in any action grieve and offend him. Thus Christians have the companionship of the divine presence. And as we realize that presence, our thoughts are brought into captivity to Jesus Christ. And our habits made to conform to divine standard. We should bear in mind that as a shield from temptation and an inspiration to purity and truth, no other influence can equal the sense of God's presence. And now I transition to the word of God, Daniel 1 and verse 8, and our pathfinders, our AYs, should be quite familiar with this one. It says, but Daniel purpose in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. As I looked at the verse, I noticed that we have three P's. And so I'm going to work those P's so that we can get the point. The first P we have is purpose. The second we have is portion. And the third is prince. Of course, when this text is used, I do not necessarily bring it across this way. But I'm going to use it this way, this afternoon, to bring across the point. And so Daniel, recognizing that what he stood for was about to be compromised. He decided to pop us. And for us as Seventh-day Adventists, for us as Christians, and young people specifically, we must pop us. We must commit. We must be resolute in our thoughts and know who we stand for, and what we stand for. And we can also point out that the purpose that Daniel would have made in this context did not just happen the day that he was brought onto the king's table, but it was a lifelong process that started since the day he accepted to be a child of God. And so we also bring into perspective growing in Christ Jesus. Because the way that we started should not be the same place we are today in our Christian experience. We are supposed to grow in Christ Jesus. Our attitude, our appetite... Our indulgence should grow in the spiritual context so that we know what to abstain from. We know what to stand against and what to accept in the context of Christian living. What about the second P that we have which is portion? There are many persons who desire large portions. And of course, your size can very well determine the kind of portion that you desire to take in. But portion should always and also be recognized in the framework of what is good and acceptable in the sight of God. And there are things that we should take in and there are things that we should not take in. And we can also introduce another word, which is temperance. And you very well know that temperance is the abstinence of that which is bad and the moderate use 
of that which is good. And even when we are brought before the king, whether it is in the earthly context, whether it is in the context of a birthday party, whether it is in the context of a luncheon or a community initiative, we must be mindful of the concept of portion because portion is important for our Christian living example and also existence. And what about the last P, which is the prince? And in Daniel's situation, the prince was acknowledged as the one who was in charge of. And so he was getting permission from so that he can continue to live the lifestyle that he knows is right and pleasing in the sight of God. I can let you know today that we should be in charge of our bodies. In other words, we should be concerned about our health because our health is important to us. We should not allow others to be more concerned about our health than we are concerned. We should also recognize that persons should not cause us to indulge where we know we should not. We should decide. We have the freedom of choice. And so we should not allow others to choose for us. As good Christians, we should be able to choose for ourselves. And in our choosing, our choosing should not be based on sensation. Our choosing should not be based on feeling. Our choosing should not be based on taste. Our choosing should not be based on how it looks. But our choosing should be based on biblical principles. And so 1 Corinthians 10.31 says to us, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, whatsoever ye do, you must do all to the glory of of God. And we also know that our body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. We are not our own. We are bought with a price. And therefore, we must glorify God in our bodies. So in as much as we have the opportunity to decide what comes in, we must also recognize that our bodies belongs to God. It is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, when it comes to the purposing, when it comes to the portion, and when it comes to the prince who is in charge, the reality is God is large and in charge of this body. And every born again child of God, that body belongs to God. And so do not defile yourself. Let us not defile ourselves. Let us not compromise in any aspect of immorality but let us stand for God let us stand for principle and just as the sun shines to wipe out darkness let us be the light of the world so that when persons see us they can see Christ in us and come to know Christ whom to know is life eternal God bless you yes man See, the pastor was talking about me and uh, Daniel, eh, and he's so right. That king was bold when I tell you. He tried to tell me to eat this and that, pork and wine and uh, oh, kid boy. I say, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Wow, wow, Daniel. But it, and after all that happened, and he see that God was the true, the true savior, mm. the true and only God. And how become real good friends? Of course. Uh, hey, when you see all those, he, he gave the, the pork and thing to eat. They get so fat, they stupid too. Hey, but we who ate the grains and everything and uh -huh. the veggies, ooh, we looked good. Yes. And then the king said, you see that? That is a good strategy. 
Yeah. yeah, it's nice. You see, your pastor talk about mm. really sit with you, you know. Oh yes, it yes, did. Yes. It did. Temperance. He spoke to me. Uh, hey, and didn't you tell me about some marriage you had as well? Let us see that story for another day. Oh, want some music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, yeah. let, let, me, let me fresh up a bit. Okay, okay, no problem. So we'll go to the praise and worship now. Please join us in standing as we sing a few hymns. We will be singing from the Advent Youth Sing. We'll start by singing hymn number 10. Brighten the corner where you are.
really like nice singing, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Daniel, I know you're real smart, you know, and I hear you used to receive visions from God. So let me ask you this. Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. Why do you feel that mean? Hmm. You know, as I say, I get visions from God. Hold on, one is coming. Ooh. Mm hmm. You sure, dear Lord? Okay. I think I have the answer. Honey from the lion. Oh, oh I, you know, I used to thought you were faking it, you know. Okay, okay. But I'll, I'll tell you more about, about that story later. After this service, you know. You want to introduce the next person up? Okay. Well, as, we, as our service is coming to a close, we will now have the Vesper by Brother Ruel Roberts at this time. Good afternoon, everyone and viewers. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. As Seventh-day Adventists, we are called to live lives that glorify God in all aspects, including our conduct and how we treat our bodies. The Bible, which is our foundation of faith and practice, offers profound wisdom on self-control, a fruit of the Spirit especially in areas that challenge our spiritual and physical health, such as sexuality, substance use, entertainment, diet, and education. Self-control is a divine mandate and a reflection of the Holy Spirit's work within us. As Seventh-day Adventists, embracing self-control across all facets of our lives, be it in our sexuality, our consumption of substances, our choices of entertainment, our diet, or our pursuit of education is fundamental to living, out, to living out our faith authentically and wholly. It's about honoring God with our bodies, our minds, and our spirits, recognizing that we are stewards of the gifts he has bestowed upon us. Let us remember Paul's encouragement in 2 Timothy 1.7. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. It is through this divine empowerment that we can overcome the temptations and challenges of this world, living out our faith in a manner that draws others to Christ. Our lives, marked by self-control, become a testament to the transformative power of the gospel. As we depart from this place, may we carry with us the conviction of, to live lives that are pleasing to God, that lives that shine as beacons of his love and grace in a world in need of hope. Let us lean on God's strength, not on our own, knowing that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. May our journey of faith be characterized by wisdom, discipline, and a steadfast reliance on God, who proves, who provides the ultimate example of self-control through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Ruel, for the Vesper. I will now have a short prayer session done by Pastor Bernard Lyons as our service comes to an end. All right, this afternoon I'm joined with the Area Coordinator, Sister Jasmine Cornwall. She's the Area Coordinator for the Northern District. I am pleased to have her here with me at this time. And so I'm going to just ask her to give some encouragement to those listening. And after she's done, we are going to sing Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. She's going to do the first prayer session. And then I'm going to do the second press session. So just say hi. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Here at River Sally and our online viewers as well. I am happy to be here this evening. I think that this program this evening was one that was well thought of 
and very appropriate for the time in which you are living. I just want to congratulate all of our young people who see it fit despite the challenges to stand firm for God. It's easy to love, it's easy to have joy, it's easy to have a lot of the parts of the fruit of the spirit, but when it comes to self-control, that is where we have a battle, a real tough battle. So, as we have sat and listened this evening, I pray that the many tips and the advices that we were given, we are going to put it into practice in our lives so we can become better Christians. And we can also encourage our friends to practice the fruit self-control. Amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. We just sing in a nice and solemn manner. For the blessings that this Sabbath day has brought us. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life so we can come and fellowship and worship in your holy temple. As we have sat this evening, Lord, and we have listened to this timely message, I pray that all of us may take it to heart. I pray, Lord, not only for our young people who are within the confines of the River Sally Church. But for all our listeners in Grenada and across the world, wherever they are tuned in, I pray, Holy Father, that they may take the tips, that they may take all the encouragements that were given. Most of all, the Lord, help them to have a saving relationship with you. Because we realize we could only do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. So let us stay with you. Let us remain connected to you. Help us, dear Lord, to be careful with the places where we go and the things that we listen to and the things that would, we see that would lure us away from the Christian standards. I pray, Lord, that you may continue to be with the AY leader and the AY society of River Sally. I pray, Lord, that you may continue to strengthen them, that you may continue to give them the wisdom that they need even as they lead your young people aright. So into your hands, dear Lord, I commit all of us for safekeeping is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, we continue in prayer. We thank you for the wonderful initiative, for the topic, for the message. We thank you for those who avail themselves to be led by your spirit so that as a people, we could have been blessed and continue to be blessed as we lift up the high ideals of youth ministry 
and the high ideals of your word. Amen. We pray today for our young people, those who used to be part of the family of God, but have gone astray, those who because of indulgence, those who because of what they would have looked at or what they would have read or what they would have heard, what they would have taken in, would have decided to turn from Christ and go back to the world. We know their God like the prodigal son. It is possible to come back home. And so we ask the God that your spirit will give your young people no rest, no peace, dear God. Trouble their hearts so that they can recognize that where they are is not where God wants them to be because he has called them for greatness. He has called them for a higher standard of living in this context. And so we pray for those who would have gone astray. We ask that the compelling power of your Holy Spirit would move them to repentance and reconciliation. We pray that they would come back home to the fold of safety. Because we know that Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But we thank you because we know the lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus himself, who says, come now and let us reason together. And Lord, sometimes uh, the mindset of our young people, it is not where it ought to be, but I know, dear God, that the power of the Holy Spirit is sufficient to break the chains of sin that bind them. And they can be loose in the name of Jesus to live better lives, more powerful lives, representatives of Christ wherever they are called to serve. Amen. And so Lord, help them to live that old life of sin, that old life of pleasure and come back home to Jesus Christ so that they can be champions. They can be soldiers in the army of Jesus Christ to march against the enemy to march against the stronghold of the devil to break down the walls of deceit to break down the walls of temptation to march victoriously and let the world know that they are soldiers of Jesus Christ and so Lord we say thank you we pray a protection and covering over our young people and even for those who are inside Lord Protect them also and keep them so that they are the end of it all. You can say to them, well done, thou good and faithful servants. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Amen. So we consecrate, we recommit, and dear God, we reclaim the loss in your name, in your power. This be our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. Amen, amen. All right. Well, thank you so much to everyone who made it back this afternoon for our AY service on self-control and to all our viewers and listeners that watched and interacted. Oh, yes. I pray that it was a blessing to all of you as much as it was to us. And I also hope that you would go home with the good messages on self-control. But please don't keep it to yourself. Sharing is caring. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the Mission Live channel and tune in for the other services for the other services streamed as well. These include the Sunday night service, which will be streamed tomorrow at 7 p.m. On Tuesday, there will be the Pastor's Corner at 11.30 a.m. and the rebroadcast will be at 8 a.m. 8 p.m. Youth Life Unplugged will be streamed on Friday at 7 p.m. And of course, our regular Sabbath morning and afternoon service at 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. respectively. Thank you so much again to everyone who made it this afternoon and all those who participated in the program. To our musicians as well, we say thank you. May God continue to bless you and your ministry as you serve him. Speaking of music, 
To bring our well spent service to a close, we now invite back the choristers to soothe us with a few songs. But before they come on, please bow your heads as we close in prayer. Dear most kind and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the messages that we have heard here this afternoon. Thank you so much for giving us self-control, dear Lord, and continue to give us self-control when we don't have it. Help us to know that you can always do anything, dear Lord, and no matter how hard it is, we can always go to you for anything. Please be with us and guide us as we go to our respective homes as well. Bless those who are viewing and listening online as well. And tune our voices as we go to sing to close. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Join Bye for now, everyone. everyone. Join with us as we have our closing hymn. It's taken from the Advent Youth Sing, hymn number 111. 1111, Jesus is coming soon. Please stand.